on BBC One. Major new drama for Sunday nights. Two families united by marriage. Miserable drink champagne. Oh, wind. Divided by class. Oh, dear, the peasants are revolting. Where world war meets class war. No Bananas starts Sunday, 7.15 on BBC One. Big boys and small cars on BBC Two now. They can go together in Top Gear. Through passport control here on BBC One, a new series for Thursdays, revealing the inner workings of Heathrow, the world's busiest international airport. London's Heathrow Airport. I don't place for women to come to some of shops, isn't it? Dennis Stone is on his way to meet the film star Melanie Griffiths, arriving from Los Angeles. Dennis is the resident photographer supplying express newspapers with pictures of the rich and famous. If somebody comes in looking bad, holes in their sweaters, knees, and you know, looking rough. Um, then that makes a picture as well. If they're drunk and rolling all over the place, which we've had before. An artist comes in, out their tiny little minds, sitting on the floor. We even got one to do a handstand one time, or try a handstand, you know, wind them up a bit. But uh, other than that, people like Melanie Griffiths, who has a certain amount of, well, she has charm and beauty. I'd much rather see her being nice and pretty. Here she comes. Oh, black, black, and black. Well, right. she's got a nice fur coat, they're holding hands. Oh, that's unfashionable. It's Griffiths. <laughs> Not in the best of moods, I'm afraid, today, but there we are. We've got our pictures, we've recorded them coming in. Kind of pretty. The what? Yeah, I think that's all right. As good as we're going to get in that sort of mood. You reckon she's been on a flight for ten and a half hours? And she gets hit with us. Flash bang, wallet, flashlights going. Poor kid. I feel sorry for him sometimes. But uh, what my boss pays me to do. <laughs> See you around, guys. <laughs> Most transatlantic flights land at dawn. It is the busiest time of day for customers. Cocaine is smuggled into Britain from North and South America, and today, these flights are being targeted by customs officers Garth Powell and Kath Hall. When you catch someone, the feeling is unbelievable. The adrenaline rush you get from finding drugs is, well, <laughs> there's only one thing better, and I won't say what that is. But <laughs> Everybody looks guilty of something. People will feel guilty. Um, am I going to be stopped? Am I going to be pulled out of the crowd? Nobody likes being singled out. Yes, ladies. Let's see if they say this. Thank you. Good morning. Can I see your passports, please? Where have you come from this morning? Uh -huh. Thank you. And what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. Are you working at the moment? I'm unemployed. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, outfit you're wearing? Where do you obtain that? What about what? The outfit that you're wearing. Yeah, what about it? Where do you obtain it? This is a present from my boyfriend. Uh -huh. I bought these myself. Mm -hmm. My grand knitted this. Uh -huh. yeah. Why, well, you want to borrow it? <laughs> 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 Kath's suspicions have been aroused by a girl who has just arrived on the Virgin flight from New York. 
She's only been out to New York for five days. Um, she's unemployed. Obviously, she travels abroad quite often, and she's just not got the funds to um, support these frequent trips. Uh, she's been backwards and forwards to Jamaica over the last few years, which we know is like, you know, most of um, uh, quite a lot of the cocaine from South America transits through the Caribbean. Have you got anything inside you? Of course not. Hmm? No. You sure? We're going to find it now. That's you what I mean, but you're going to find out that you're wasting your time. I'm wasting yeah. my time as well. And all the people in the Scott Free, they let them pass. We're just <laughs> doing our job, do you know what I mean? Oh, boy. Unfortunately, drug smugglers don't have drug smugglers written across the red. Mm. Or else, you know. But one thing you must know, though, you see me, if I was smuggling drugs, there's no way I would have read Barrett ready. Obviously, this brings attraction. I'm not an idiot. If I was smuggling drugs, you couldn't be able to tell. I would know nothing like this. Trust right. me. OK. Nothing like this. Except for an, from I'm an expert, you, is it? I'm not really an expert, but I'm telling you, somebody that's got sense. I couldn't be travelling drugs and have bright hair like this. It's obviously that you're going to stop me, isn't it? Because I'm, look, out of the rest of people, you have to notice me. I've got black hair. I could have easily put my hair back in one and look simple, put on a little suit. Something you would have never stopped me. <laughs> Trust me. You look coming like you're new to it. I ain't. What? You look coming like you're new to it, but I ain't. Mm, you'd be surprised. Mm. Every year, 2,000 young hopefuls start on an intensive training course with British Airways. In five weeks' time, these 14 raw recruits hope to take to the skies as stewards and stewardesses. Now, this stage of your training is a pass or fail program. So you're probably asking yourself, what happens if we fail? OK, what happens if we fail is we can then terminate your contract with British Airways. I have to say, we will not fail you. And that's true, we won't. The only people who's going to fail this course are yourselves. Because throughout the course, your trainers will offer you every assistance, and we'll call it feedback, they will give you every assistance to get through the course. If you decide not to listen to your trainers and say, well, I don't really care, I'm just going to go ahead and do whatever I want to do because this is me, then you will fail. But it's you who will fail, and we won't fail you. I wonder if they get to visit Concord. They've been on it once, in Belfast. It was on in Belfast, and it was doing um, a children's trip. And it was on, on the tarmac, so we can't go. Concord? Yeah, Mrs. Can we come on board? Can we have a look? The fledgling cabin crew will be working on the long haul 747 fleet, and this is their first chance to see the aircraft close up. Is it big or is it not big? Oh, four Rolls Royce engines, RB211. They are big. They are big and very, very powerful. D, E, F, G, H, J, K on the far side. And they restore. You always get the left and right as you're facing the cockpit. So this is the left hand side of the aircraft. Right. That's the right hand side of the aircraft. Right. Okay. So A is always on the left hand side. Yes. yes. Would you like to say welcome on board? Welcome on board is flight. Let's go <laughs> to Cape Town. Going from London Heathrow to Cape Town. Very good. <laughs> and you are responsible if you're working on the upper deck for looking after the flight crew, making sure they have enough fluid. It's quite important. You're supposed to offer them a drink every 20 minutes. And another important function is to make sure they are actually awake. <laughs> Poke your head in the bunk area and have a look. Bearing in mind, in real life, there might be a captain there in his pyjamas. <laughs> In five weeks' time, the successful recruits will themselves be sleeping in these crew bunks built into the tail of the 747. Ooh. Your responsibility is to make sure those toilets are 100% clean at all times. You can change out of your uniform and put whatever you choose to sleep on. Don't bring your baby doll nighties. Buenos dias, señores y señores pasajeros, bienvenidos a bordo. So why did you not go to New York for a bit longer, then? I didn't want to. Same reason. I mean, you guys are asking me some little questions that don't really concern you and ain't really got nothing to do with jobs. Well, I, I'm sorry, but... A little while ago, you said to me that you're not going to talk to me again. I don't know what made you decide to chat to me again. Oh, I just, you know, thought I'd ask you a few more yeah, questions. Don't ask me, because if you ask me, I'm going to be difficult with everything you ask me, so it don't make sense. 
Save your own breath. That's your prerogative. Save it for your next customer. Mm. <laughs> oh, boy. I'd hate to have a job was in such a waste of time. Would you? Mm. But it can be quite rewarding. Is it? And then there's somebody that can knock you out here. I know if it's a rewarding. While Jane Smith waits in the cell, another passenger, Claire Berry, has been stopped. The two women travelled to and from New York together, but came through customs separately. Garth has checked for previous this convictions. Is yours, is it? Yeah. Pack it yourself? Yeah. She has got previous. Uh, she was uh, lifted by the authorities in Jamaica in 1989 for carrying a kilo and a half of cocaine on the body. She served two years in prison um, for that offence. Um, we have monitored her movements in and out several times before, but um, the intelligence that we've got um, on her is that uh, she should carry in some sort of solution. I've just gone. Always oh, been sick. Oh God. This is one of the bottles that she's got in her baggage. I mean, it's quite heavy for what it is. I'll just test this one. What are you looking for on the test? Um, we're looking for an immediate blue colour, uh, for it to go immediately blue. No, nothing there. In spite of this, Kath wants more time to question the two women and needs permission to formally arrest them. This is Jane. This is one. Yeah. Right, has been um, done, caught by Jamaican customs with a kilo and a half of cork on the body coming out of Jamaica. It is now one o'clock. In just over two hours, Air New Zealand flight 001 will be leaving for Auckland. Check-in is closing, and the final economy passenger is Mrs. Audrey Jackson. If any flight is going to leave Heathrow on time today, it should be this one. There is a letter here today to say that Her Majesty the Queen is travelling on the flight. Okay? So we have a lot of security for the flight. Somebody will take you through security in your wheelchair. Yeah. You're boarding the flight now, OK? The Queen will arrive at Heathrow just five minutes before boarding the aircraft. Ordinary passengers have been asked to check in three hours earlier to allow for extra security checks. This is the first time that the Queen has travelled on a scheduled flight. She'll have the first class to herself. All 16 seats will be replaced with royal furniture and three and a half tonnes of royal luggage will be carried in the hold. This is the Queen's ticket. She's travelling on a commercial flight, therefore she has to be checked in as a commercial passenger and boarding pass and everything else. Today the Queen is travelling under the name of Muir. It is the convention that tickets are not issued under her real name. Boarding pass, seat 1 Alpha. 384 economy passengers will travel in the rear cabins, while upstairs, the 36 club class seats will be occupied by the royal party. The New Zealand government is picking up the bill, a cheaper option than hiring a private aircraft. Right, you've been through this procedure before anyway, yeah. haven't you? You've got, I've, well, I've got to tell you that you're under arrest. I'm under arrest? Yeah, only on suspicion of being involved in the importation of a controlled drug. You do not have to say anything, but anything you do say... No. Have you got so it? Right there, you've searched me, you have did a body search, yeah, you found nothing. Bought... Why do you, what, where do you think the drugs is? Well, people stuff and swallow drugs. So All when right. you do the urine test... Just hold on a minute. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something that you were to rely on in court. Do you understand yeah, anything understand. you do, sir, may be given yeah. in evidence? Both women have been in the cells for four hours and can now be held for as long as Kath thinks is necessary. Well, can you get, a, go, get hurry up and get on with it then, please? Just hold on a second. Right, do you understand that yes, caution? Yes, I understand the, the caution. I understand everything. Right, are you willing to provide Yes, I'm willing, willing, to, willing to do everything you want me to do because I haven't got nothing. I just want to get over and done with it and go home because I'm fed up with this f***ing 
In the Air New Zealand departure lounge, boarding is about to begin. It is one hour before takeoff, and, according to the schedule, the Queen should now be leaving Buckingham Palace. Across the airport in the Royal Suite, the Lord Chamberlain is beginning to get twitchy about timing. Please, no, I haven't heard. Do it three, but I haven't had any. Can we find out? It is half an hour before departure time. The Queen will not come aboard until every other passenger is in their seat, so Air New Zealand staff are out rounding up any stragglers. We're just making sure we're identifying them by the tags, the Air New Zealand tags on their uh, bags. And we're wait making sure that they're rounded up and obviously go straight down to the flies as quickly as possible. And where I think we're up to. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. We've got a few people who haven't been handed the letters, so they didn't know to go down. In this case, they have to be on the gate because the, air the aircraft can't be late. Um, let's just check, see if we can't. Bidi J, across the aisle, and turn right. 60, straight down on the aisle. How would you like to cross the aisle and turn right? Hello, you're Atlantic. All right, OK. Six hours after arriving at Heathrow, Claire Berry is still being held by customs. She's hardly the sort of person you'd expect to be travelling to the States with frequency. She's got an awful lot of uh, new clothing, and she's got a child, as you've seen, and she also has a um, pushchair um, to the value of around, around about £300. That is an awful lot of money for somebody in her position. You travel about an awful lot to say you're unemployed. Well, where do you get your finances from to do this? It's got nothing to do with jobs, has it? Well, we're trying to establish the reason for you travelling. I can't oh. afford to travel all over the world like you do. You must be bad lucky, dying. I don't have to answer you with nothing, you know, when I really check it out. I don't have to tell you shit. I don't have to tell you if I sell my crutches. I don't have to tell you if I lick out batty. I don't have to tell you nothing. The only thing you're supposed to do is find the drugs. Right. With the Queen due at the airport in the next few minutes, one person is still missing. Mrs Audrey Jackson, the 80-year-old wheelchair passenger. Kath's attention is now focused on Claire Berry, who she's taking for a urine test. If the result is positive, it will show either that she's a drug user, which she has denied, or that she's smuggling packages of drugs concealed inside her body. positive result. Right. You said, you told me before when I asked you, you don't use drugs. Yeah. Well, it's come up positive. It's so. come up positive? Yeah. Positive of what? Cocaine. So what have you got to say about that? Oh, well, I do use it, but I didn't tell you that I did. Well, I don't why think it is that then? I don't think it really had nothing to do with you, whether I did or not. Right. What we're going to want to do... What we're going to do is to seek to find out if she's prepared to undergo an internal examination by the doctor. Um, that would satisfy us that she hasn't got anything inside her, uh, which would obviate having to go to the hospital to take an X-ray. Your Majesty, welcome to Heathrow again. Sunny day, very, very nice day.
It is 10 minutes before takeoff. The Queen is beginning her scheduled five minute pause in the Royal Suite. All the other passengers should now be aboard. But in Terminal 3, one is still waiting. Has anybody well, spoken to you? The plane won't go without me. No, no. we'll, it, we'll no, get you to the aircraft, time. don't worry. You've got two watches there just to make sure. I know. <laughs> one may stop. Yeah. It'll be with you very shortly. At any rate, there'll be English time and New Zealand time. Oh, All right. I think <laughs> know <laughs> yeah. where you are. I think you know the difference by the time you get there. <laughs> Mrs. Jackson is still waiting for her wheelchair to arrive. Hey, when it comes, I'll be leaving the better front of you. Oh, the bowler hat. I've never seen that. I mean, what can you say about that uniform? Smile, girls. We got some of the girls upstairs. We practice in their curtsy. They all get a little dip, you know. <laughs> Never a big enough tip for us, you know. The wheelchair has turned up at last, but the aircraft is still almost half a mile away at gate 15. We don't need anybody to push because it's a moving passage. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Neville Hay. It is my pleasure to welcome you aboard as the New Zealand Royal Service to Los Angeles. In the next few minutes, Her Majesty will board the aircraft for our 3.15 departure. 15, we want. Don't take me to the wrong place. If I'm not going to, don't worry. Sure you're not. I'll leave the complaint till next time. Our route today takes us over Scotland, Greenland, Baffin Island, Canada, northern USA, with an arrival in Los Angeles around 6.30. I've got it here, don't worry. Is this the Yes, it is. Is it your feet, my love? I'll take the three million, but you are what you want to do. Let's go to Stephanie. Can you have a cup of coffee? Where's Stephanie? You guys go with Stephanie and her seat. The flight will now leave on time, and Dennis should get his historic photograph of the Queen boarding an aircraft as an ordinary passenger. was a back view or walking up the stairs but everybody went up the back behind her so all we could see of the queen was somebody else's hat in front of her face even when she turned around i believe she made a little gesture of a wave we didn't see any of it so as far as i'm concerned useless i have to explain to my editor that it all went wrong <laughs> While the Queen leaves on her first flight on a scheduled aircraft, the cabin crew recruits are being prepared for what their trainers call their last flight as a passenger. So you really need to be aware when you're crew, and what we'll be doing over these next four days is selecting you as crew. And those that aren't crew will be what? And what do passengers know? Nothing. OK, so when you complete this course, you will always be crew. So never again are you going to sit on an aircraft and just be a passenger. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Captain Show in flight to Barbados today. Uh, we'll be cruising at an altitude of 33,000 foot, and our flight time will be about 8 hours and 10 minutes. Uh, the cabin crew will be showing you a demonstration. Um, there's a couple of aeroplanes before us just to depart, and um, if you just have a look outside on the left hand side, uh, there's Concorde just arriving here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, of course. So it is. <laughs> it's going to be like, oh, what's going to happen? If they're going to throw some yeses. <laughs> I've got a crew? No? Well, it would be nice if they came around with drinks, but no. <laughs> no, I haven't got a crew. Take your seats for takeoff. Oh, well, bang on time. <laughs> Ready for takeoff? 
we get that in a minute. You get the dings in a minute and we go for it. You get the chimes, the engine noise in about a minute after that, we'll be the shouting. We're ready to go. Here we go. In five weeks' time, the trainees will be expected to be able to do this on a real plane with real passengers. Hello. Who are you waiting for? Who would you like to see? Who's your favourite group? Um, E17. E17, no. Have you ever heard of the Rolling Stones? Mick Jagger. Who's your mummy? Or your daddy? Where are they? You go and say that, tell them that Mick Jagger's coming through and see what they say. They'll know. <laughs> I joined BOAC as a postboy in 1946, uh, just after the war. And August the 12th, 1996, is when I would have done 50 years in and around Heathrow Airport. So Airways Terminal and all over the place here. And it, funny enough, it falls exactly on a Monday again. And when I come in on a Monday on the 12th of August, it's like when I went to work 50 years ago as a little postboy and I had to join up at Airways Terminal, Victoria. So it's rather unique in 50 years, it's exactly Monday to Monday. Be a few parties that day. <laughs> I'll start with champagne this time, instead of two quid a week. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> He's very good at walking backwards, you know. Along up the escalator backwards, along the walkway backwards, you know. Sometimes I do actually tell him to be careful. When there's a mob, they get crazy. It's difficult to imagine Dennis getting crazy, but if there's a mob of them and they get very excited, then they can fall over backwards. It's one of the, yeah, it's the danger of the job. Last one for the shot. Last one. This is the last one, Dennis. Big smile, then. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Bye Thanks, bye. mate. Bye, guys. You are no longer under arrest. You're free to go. And the formalities that have to be covered just the return of your money. Thank you for your cooperation. Passport and ticket. Thank, Thank you, very, you much very much for your cooperation. At least you let it as bad as the police, though. The doctor's examination of Jane Smith and Claire Berry revealed no hidden drugs. Thanks very much. OK. Sorry to hold you up here. All right. Hope it don't happen again, though. <laughs> if you, want it, you can help. After eight hours, Kath must now reluctantly accept that they are not smuggling cocaine. 